If you are watching this, then you have probably been through some sort of intellectual awakening. You have probably come to reject the official version of almost everything, and have probably come to the realisation that the mainstream media is lying to us most of the time. After going through this awakening, you will more than likely have discovered individuals who do seem to be telling the truth. But did you ever stop and analyse these people, and ask yourself, can they really be trusted? In this video, I will put some of the most prominent figureheads of the truth movement under the microscope to try and answer that question. At first glance, it would appear that Alex Jones is working to expose the lies and reveal the truth, making him much more appealing than the mainstream media. In fact, his website Infowars.com is a mine of information. However, when critical research is done into Alex Jones, it does not take long to discover some very questionable behaviour. For example, I'd like to draw your attention to his radio broadcast on New Year's Eve 1999, at the very height of the panic surrounding the Y2K bug. Listen as Alex Jones lies to the world. And here in America, they're gearing up and bracing for terrorism and militarizing everything in front of us. So it's happening there, it's happening here. There they're using the war with Chechnya. Here they're using Y2K and the threat of terrorism. Oh, this is extremely serious. Two weeks ago, Topol M, 6,200-mile super range, multiple warhead, newest design U.S. clone technology missiles were deployed across Russia. They're mobile. Uh, these are first strike type systems. They're also designed to uh, uh, survive several strikes from America or any other nation. They're deploying these, and Yeltsin openly has been threatening us weekly to nuke us. I mean, it's just getting insane. Uh, and absolutely, this looks like just one more ratchet on the takeover of America. And yes, um, they have an extreme strongman in, KGB leader, running Russia right now. They have deployed the missiles against us and their submarines and have already delivered uh, fully functional missile cruisers to China. Yes, he uh, took, the, took the codes off and he took away our first strike capability. By first strike, that means if missiles are in the air, mm -hmm. let's say 4,000 of them. The Russians have got a lot more than that. Right. 4,000 missiles coming in, subs launching, uh, suitcases going off. Uh, we have to wait until we absorb the first strike that will mean virtual uh, annihilation to our military uh, brass. I know your CFR. You've been told you'll be able to be in the bunker if they go to this level. I don't know if they'll do it. It may just be ratcheting down the global system. Six months. You're telling me a general at Cheyenne Mountain walks out. He says um, some type of five missiles have been launched and says that everything's wonderful. Back to sports. I want to know where the yeah, fire is. Actually, yeah. Comrade Jennings was actually looked like he'd gone into catatonic brain fart because he's trying to keep the smile on his face, Cheshire Cat smile. When they went back to him, he goes, well, you know, these little glitches happen. And ha, notice ha, ha. how we're all calmly sitting here right now, knowing that nuclear missiles could be about to rain down. And that little New World Order scum. Hey, hey. It would only be a handle. Okay, first of all, guys. See the description for a link to a full expose of Alex Jones' Y2K broadcast. Another problem with Alex Jones is that he quite often begins shouting when he is on mainstream TV. This is odd, considering you would surely try to avoid making a fool of yourself, particularly when you are given the opportunity to speak to an audience of people who one might consider not to be awake. For example... And, and we would have said, and we would, and I would have said, hey, that's kind of mad, and so on. And it's an interesting psychological phenomenon. Like dismiss the, Skiggy, it. the, prob the problem is, the conspiracy theories troops. like this oh, are believed. Nothing. Are believed in. Hey, listen! White... I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. Okay, our government in the U.S. is building FEMA camps. We have an NDAA where they disappear people now. You have this arrest for public safety, life in prison. You are the worst it, person I've ever interviewed. No, no, it's basically off it. with their heads, disappear David, thank you for away. being with us. It's gone uh, half Liberty past 11. You're watching the Liberty Sunday politics. Rising. We have an idiot Freedom in the program will not today. Stop. You Coming will not up stop in just Freedom. 20 minutes. You will not stop the Republic. Humanity is awakening. Infowars.com. No. You guys are crazy. I'll be looking at the week the ahead with our political stupid. panel. You're Until crazy. then, the think Sunday the politics across know. the You're UK. Crazy. Think of the public isn't like Again, there is a link in the description to the full Alex Jones interview on the BBC Sunday Politics show. Alex Jones also tried to discredit Bill Cooper. Well, Bill Cooper was an alcoholic, and I didn't ever try to attack him. He got mad because the network uh, put me on at night. And he thought, and I'd really, really never heard his show because I didn't listen to a lot of shortwave. I was busy. Uh, but I'd seen his book. It was all about flying saucers, so I didn't finish it. 
somebody giving it to me on Access TV like in 96. And then he really started attacking me in 98 because he was an egomaniac. And, you know, talking about flying saucers in the ocean and, and aliens and all this stuff. And I've tried to never attack him, but people resurrected old tapes he edited of me and stuff. And I just feel sorry for Bill. And he really let him set him up and, you know, ran out there and, and uh, you know, helped him kill him. And uh, it's just a big distraction, sir. I don't talk about flying saucers and all that stuff, man. I'm sorry. And uh, so, I mean, it's all like an ego thing, like it's two football teams and who's for who. Now, I'm sorry for Bill. But anybody, I mean, he, he was a liar, though. You know, uh, one time I had him on the radio, and he was cussing, and I delayed him once. Then I said, please don't cuss again. I delayed him again. And I said, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. And, and, and then he went around saying he never cussed. This is very misleading, considering Bill Cooper reached the conclusion that the whole idea of extraterrestrials was the biggest hoax ever orchestrated on mankind. There is no evidence to suggest that Bill Cooper was an alcoholic either. Alex Jones is just peddling rumours here. And finally, Bill Cooper did not have to be thrown off the air. The following is the final part of the only interview between Alex Jones and Bill Cooper. Well, sir, again, Mr. Cooper, have a good one, and uh, thanks, uh, thanks for being with us this evening. Again, this is all, I guess it's not good news, it's not bad news, it is just the news, and I'll be trying to keep in touch with you. God bless. You too. Take care. That was Bill Cooper. You can tell I'm real tired. Please see the full Alex Jones, Bill Cooper interview to realize the truth about Bill Cooper's apparent cussing. In addition, Alex Jones also admits to having connections to the CIA. For example, whenever I go to a family reunion, mm. half the people in the room are former wow. retired CIA. What? Whenever I go to a family reunion, mm. half the people in the room are former wow. retired CIA. What? Perhaps we should all consider the possibility that Alex Jones is not the man who he seems to be. Jordan Maxwell will come across as a being an expert on religion. He has also claimed to have had many paranormal experiences, making him a very interesting individual to listen to. However, once again, there is a darker side to him. Manly Palmer Hall was a 33rd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite. It seems bizarre, then, that Jordan Maxwell would be friends with such an individual. Listen. And of course, my 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 favorite of all is uh, uh, of Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall was a dear friend of mine. Uh, I loved him. He was a wonderful and the most incredible mind you'll ever come across. I think he probably was the finest spiritual mind that any age has ever produced. Manly Palmer Hall was one of the most extraordinary spiritual men that has ever lived. Period. I would don't mind saying that because. There will be alarm bells ringing now for anyone who has studied Freemasonry and has realized the significant and albeit sinister role they play in the world. Likewise, for anyone who has studied the religion of Mystery Babylon, as Manly Palmer Hall's name is bound to come up there. Another name you'll recognize through study in this topic is Madame Helena Blavatsky, who Jordan Maxwell also highly rates. Have you ever heard or read uh, Mrs. Blavatsky? She's, uh... uh Alina Petrovna Bablatsky? Right, right. Yes, yes, I have all of her works. You have? Yes. Well, that's why... Yes. I no, think it's... her 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 best work was Isis Unveiled, Part 2, which is uh, Theology. Right, science. And uh, that was an exceptional uh, work. I think that Helena Petrovna Bablatsky, the Russian mystic, was a very wise and perceptive lady and she had some very profound uh, knowledge, uh, obviously, and her academic uh, uh, achievements were, were extraordinary, and so I have a very high respect for the work of Helena Blavatsky. So who was Helena Blavatsky? Well, she was a Russian occultist, and she was a Freemason. She was also the founder of the Theosophical Society, members of which include Annie Besant, Alice Bailey, and Manly Palmer Hall. The Theosophical Society is similar to the Thule Society, which brings me to Adolf Hitler. Hitler was heavily influenced by the Theosophical Society and by Blavatsky. In fact, he may well have got the idea of the swastika from the Theosophical Society logo. Hitler would also sleep with a copy of Blavatsky's book The Secret Doctrine by his bedside. In Blavatsky's book The Secret Doctrine, Volume 2, page 234, you will find the following quote. 
It is Satan who is the god of our planet, and the only god. You just saw Jordan Maxwell compliment and recommend the work of Blavatsky, and say that his favorite book was Isis Unveiled, Volume 2. Her, her best work was Isis Unveiled, Part 2, which is uh, theology. This is interesting, because on page 295 of Isis Unveiled, Volume 2, you will find the phrase, Jordanus Maximus. This would be a strange coincidence, however Jordan Maxwell is not his original name. He used to be called Russell Pine, but he changed his name because of Blavatsky's book. This doesn't just show admiration for Blavatsky, it shows devotion. This phrase is later shortened to Jordan Maximus, so Jordan Maxwell only had to change the last four letters to well, presumably because of the reference to water. After all, we all know how Jordan Maxwell likes to play with words. An example of one of Jordan Maxwell's poor word definitions would be his definition of the word Yahweh. I think the researcher Chris White explains this better than I can. Yahweh is not the name of God. Yahweh in Hebrew is an expressive term. It's expressing something. It's uh, describing something. It's not, a, it's not a formal name of God. Yahweh in Hebrew simply means, and the best way to explain what the word means is to take a garden hose and twist it, hold the, 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 the end of it, turn on the water, and you feel the pressure building up. When you release the hose, it's a release of pressure. It's a release of energy. In the Hebrew, in the ancient Hebrew, the release of dynamic energy was called Yahweh. And it was always associated with sex. It's the building up of the sexual urge and the releasing of sex in the sex act was referred to in the ancient Phoenician Canaanite system as being one with Yahweh. This is a series of huge lies from Jordan Maxwell. I encourage anyone to go try and research that in ancient Hebrew the release of dynamic energy was called Yahweh and that it was always associated with sex. There's a lot of debate on the meaning of Yahweh, but those debates come to no conclusion anything like Maxwell's. In ancient Hebrew, the word Yahweh, also referred to as the Tetragrammaton, can mean many things. Meanings like He that hath sent me, He who is always the same, He who is absolutely truly existent, He has, He is, He will be, some suggest I am the one I am, or I am whatever I need to become. Maxwell's definition, although it comes directly from Blavatsky, stems from the idea that Yahweh could have come from the proper name of the Phoenician Canaanite god Yam. It was at this point that Madame Blavatsky writes in her book The Theosophical Glossary the meaning that Jordan Maxwell will one day use to say what he just said although he adds quite a bit in his definition in order to fit with his previous theory that anoint means to anoint with sexual fluid in the hopes of trying to paint the picture of Jesus Christ being anointed with semen. Keep in mind what Blavatsky is saying here offers no sources or previous support of any kind, not to mention that no matter... There is a link in the description to Chris White's full video debunking Jordan Maxwell. Study into the mystery schools will reveal that the Egyptian pyramids were not tombs, but were in fact intended for initiation rituals. The rituals would involve the initiates lying in the sarcophagus and then being symbolically born again into the Babylonian mystery religion, which is ultimately Luciferianism. Bearing this in mind, listen to what else Jordan Maxwell has to say. Incredible. Three times I was inside the pyramid and three times I was in the king's chamber. I even had a Kemite priest do a whole ritual prayer over me in the king's sarcophagus. I laid there and it was an incredible experience laying there in that sarcophagus and having a Kemite priest do a whole prayer over me. But it's an extraordinary... I cannot stress enough how important it is to research this topic I refer to as Mystery Babylon, because it is the religion followed by the secret societies which control the world. How do you expect to overcome an enemy if you do not understand them? You have probably heard Jordan Maxwell boast that he is the one who brought David Icke to America, but as you are about to see, that's not something that I would be boasting about.
David Icke made his most infamous appearance when he claimed to be the son of God in his interview with Terry Wogan. Well, now, let me get this story right. The press claim that you claim to be the son of God. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes, you see, the thing is that... Uh, you see, it's, quite, it's quite funny, really. You know, 2,000 years ago, had a guy called Jesus sat here and said these same things, you would still be laughing. It's really, really funny that we've not really moved on that much. But there are a couple of questions. First of all, why you? And secondly, if I may say so, you have confused the message by an awful lot of predictions. Mm -hmm. For, you, you told us that there are going to be mm. earthquakes, mm -hmm. or, and, and some of them are going to happen quite soon. Yeah. Well, two things to that. Um, first of all, why me? Well, why anybody? I mean, people would have said to Jesus, and many other people like Jesus that have not been written into history. I mean, that was the most famous uh, effort of this kind to wrest control of this planet from these forces. But there have been many before that. They would have said, why you? You're a carpenter's son, for goodness sake. Who the heck are you? So, so, that, that's, that's, so, yeah, so but, why but anybody? You are, you are you're saying you're, you're part of, you were part of Jesus' soul before. Precisely. You're also part of many other people's lives on the way through As history. As we all have been. Many, we, we've all been uh, on this earth and uh, incarnated into different physical bodies many times. It's called reincarnation. But the, 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 other, the other point you bring up about the predictions. Yes. If I am given information from beings who have proved to be perfectly accurate day after day after day and things they've told, told, told us are going to happen and they happen. They told you Saddam Hussein was dead and he's That's not. That's right. He's, yes, he is. Well, he, well, I watched his birthday party on the television yesterday. All I, can, all I can say to you is all that glitters is not gold. Hang about and watch and wait. But I'll tell, say two things to watch for and let the alarm bells go if they happen. One is if they suddenly announce he is dead now, therefore they don't have to explain the past and, and what's happened over the last few weeks and the fact that he's been dead for many weeks. And secondly, if they say we've done a deal, he's gone into exile, and part of the deal is not to name the country he has gone to, therefore disappear Saddam, let the alarm bells ring. But those two things are likely to happen, and you will be saying, oh, well, he's been dead for some time. But we saw him on the television yesterday yeah. uh, celebrating his birthday. All that glitters is not gold. I Just see. hang about yeah. and wait. I see. Well, now, what about, what about eruptions? When may we expect tidal waves, eruptions, earthquakes? Well... Because of the nature of the way the Earth has been treated over a long period of time, a tremendous amount of energy has built up within the Earth that cannot get out. If it doesn't get out, bang. So this is going to be released in a controlled manner, as controlled as possible through earthquakes, through volcanoes and such like. If they don't happen, this is not punishment, if they don't happen, there is no Earth. Because of the way the Earth's been treated, the Earth is also extremely, extremely weak. And it's in the situation now where it cannot function by itself as an independent, independent entity. It is in, in effect on a life support machine already. Now the question is, it's a bit like a patient where they say the patient needs this operation to survive, but is the patient strong enough to take the operation? And that is the point that the Earth is at now. When these things happen... As will they will. As they will, my goodness, they will. When is the, when is the it, first thing going to happen? Well, it will certainly happen this year. The first sequence will begin this year. Uh, the question is that they are making before it starts is, is the Earth yet strong enough to survive well, let me these ask changes? You, why should we believe you? Please see the full David Icke, Terry Wogan interview to ensure I haven't taken anything out of context. Fortunately, David Icke's predictions of the world ending or almost ending were nothing more than false prophecies. And call me a sceptic, but I don't think that his claim to be the Son of God is particularly accurate either. If watching this interview back in 1991 didn't put you off David Icke, perhaps his shape-shifting reptilian theory did. Despite his claim to be the Son of God, and his claim to the existence of reptilian humanoids, both of which made without any real evidence, David Icke still has a massive following, so I'd like to address the lies he has told, starting with Jimmy Savile. And so I was not in the least bit surprised about him, because I was told about him in the late 1990s that he was into uh, massive paedophilia and necrophilia, sex with dead bodies, which has just come out this week through a guy uh, who, uh, who talked about it on the radio. And, and the reason that he, Jimmy Savile, this uh, entertainer who died in 2011, the reason he got away with it was because he was a procurer of children for the rich and famous. 
Actually, the reason Jimmy Savile got away with it is because other than John Lydon, no one really bothered to expose him. And that includes David Icke. David Icke does claim he knew about Jimmy Savile back in the 1990s. Because I was told about him in the late 1990s that he was into... Uh... But he did not expose Jimmy Savile. You may be shaking your head now and thinking David Icke did expose Jimmy Savile, but I challenge you to go back and try and prove that. If you go back through David Icke's books, interviews and online articles, you won't find any mention of Jimmy Savile until after his death in October of 2011. The reason you may be under the impression that David Icke exposed Jimmy Savile before he died is because he now takes credit for doing so. David Icke says the following in his article, Jimmy Savile, Doorman to the Cesspit. Just as I have told those who would listen about Jimmy Savile. David Icke makes similar claims in the headlines of his articles. For example, Savile, the hole in the dam of elite paedophilia that David Icke has been exposing all these years. Written by David Icke on 5th of October 2012. David Icke was right about Jimmy Savile. Written by David Icke on the 11th of October 2012. Jimmy Savile now connected to necrophilia, precisely what David Icke has been saying for years. Written by David Icke on the 24th of October 2012. But I encourage anyone to go back and try and find where David Icke says that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile before his death in October 2011. When you fail to find such a quote, I direct you to an article written on Conspiracy Archive which explains this matter very well. The link is in the description. So to summarise, David Icke knew about Jimmy Savile in the 90s, and he decided to remain silent about it, no doubt leading to the further unnecessary suffering of children because of Savile. David Icke now takes credit for exposing Jimmy Savile years before he died. As Leonardo da Vinci said, those who do not oppose evil command it to be done. A very interesting addition to this issue is what the mainstream media did about it. Instead of exposing David Icke as being a liar, the mainstream media supported David Icke's false claims. For example, the Sunday Express on the 28th of October 2012 wrote, Savile's BBC colleague David Icke was at the forefront of such claims in the 90s when he named Savile and others as paedophiles. Similarly, on the 26th of October 2012, The Independent wrote, Ike has been calling the former DJ a paedophile for years to anyone who would listen. One has to ask, if David Ike is such a threat to those who control the world, then why is the mainstream media helping him by supporting his lies? I will answer that question at the end in my conclusion. The only way to avoid deception once and for all is to adopt the following golden rule. Don't believe anything anyone tells you unless you can prove it in your own research. If we apply this rule to David Icke, then his theory to the existence of reptilian humanoids remains a belief, as does his theory that the universe is a hologram. As long as such theories remain unproven, those who follow David Icke's pseudo-scientific theories will remain in the realms of religion. Alice Bailey was a theosophist and Luciferianist who founded the Lucis Trust, previously known as the Lucifer Publishing Company, which now does publishing for the United Nations. David Icke's similarities with Satanist Alice Bailey are vast. I won't spend much time on this, as Chris White has already done an excellent job of explaining it. The following clip is taken from Chris White's video debunking David Icke, showing his belief in Alice Bailey's Seventh Ray Theory. David very much believed in the Seven Ray Theory of Alice Bailey. In fact, in both of his early books, he not only gives lists for each ray and their characteristics, but he gives the exact characteristics for each one that Alice Bailey wrote. I will show you Alice Bailey's Seven Ray Chart on the screen, and I will read from David's book, Truth Vibrations. David begins, These rays are, 1. Pure Will and Power, Ray 2. Love and Wisdom, Ray 3. Intelligence, Ray 4, Harmony Through Conflict, Ray 5, Concrete Mind and Science, Ray 6, Love and Devotion, Ray 7, Law and Order and Ceremonial Magic, the Rikorsky Ray. 
that last part is a dead giveaway because if you notice that Alice Bailey associated each ray to an ascended master, you'll notice that next to the last ray, the one Ike calls the Rikorsky ray, is named Saint Germain. And that is what Bailey, and even Ike, would sometimes call Rikorsky. Bailey would also refer to him as Master R. For a full list of parallels between Alice Bailey and David Icke, I direct you to Chris White's full video debunking David Icke. I have given you the facts. The following is my conclusion. I conclude that Alex Jones, Jordan Maxwell, and David Icke are all agents of the secret societies whom they profess to oppose. I conclude that these secret societies placed some of their members into prominent positions in the truth movement, and I deduce that this was done to limit the amount of truth which we receive, to spread disinformation, and perhaps to direct the so-called truth movement in a certain direction. The purpose of this video is to hopefully reawaken everyone, and to start a real truth movement with real people who are actually capable of thinking and researching for themselves, rather than looking to someone else to do it for them. I hope that you now start looking for proof for everything you currently believe, and lastly, I hope that from now on you don't believe anything anyone tells you unless you can prove it in your own research. Only then will you never be deceived again, and only that way will mankind stand a chance.